cap or no cap? That is the question. Cap 4K is apparently the answer. I can't believe I just said that. We are in a wild market time at the moment where just a few years ago, the idea of Elgato's Cam Link being a capture card oriented just for cameras was not revolutionary, but at least an exciting concept that I guess capture card companies hadn't thought of before or hadn't thought was a worthwhile investment into releasing a product to then have, you know, return on that investment. And now we have them everywhere. Elgato has a couple now, Avermedia already had one and now has a newer one, Razer introduced a new one that's more expensive than everyone else's for some reason. <laughs> They're everywhere. There's the cheap $5 ones that are kind of crappy but good if you just want something cheap on a budget. This is Avermedia's new live streamer cap. 4K. As mentioned, this is Avermedia's newest entry into the Cam Link like product market, which is just a basic rectangle, HDMI on one end, USB 3C on the other end. But this one's actually pretty neat because most of the camera oriented capture cards, including Avermedia's previous entry, had no kind of flexibility when it came to support. It just took in like 1080p60, 4K30, and that was it, as is the case with Elgato's Cam Links and even the Cam Link Pro to some capacity. But this bad boy kind of accepts everything almost including retro formats which is wild and it does hdr tone mapping so specs wise we're looking at 4k 60 input 1440p up to 144 hertz input as it is hdmi 2.0 pretty nice however it won't capture in any of those frame rates it only captures in either 1080p 60 or 4k 30 so you can't actually get a native 1440p capture from it which may be disappointing for some of you, but honestly, 4K30 and 1080p60 is fine if you're actually using it for streaming, and it's oriented towards a capture camera capture card anyway, so your camera's not outputting 1440p. I think GoPros are the only cameras that actually capture in that format, and I don't think they output, over, output it over HDMI anyway. Since there is only one HDMI input, you will need an HDMI splitter if you want to pass through your gameplay to play on a TV or whatever. In terms of chroma subsampling, you get 422 YUY2 at 1080p60 or NV12 if you want to save on bandwidth, and then you get NV12 at 4K30 as well. HDR is accepted into the capture card, but it is always uh, tone mapped to SDR, and the tone mapping looks fine, about like most of the other capture cards can do, uh, which is pretty nice. Jumping into latency, we're looking at 40 milliseconds of latency. 40. His name's Henry. At least when it's working right. I had some serious issues with it being detected and lagging quite a bit on my front panel USB ports. I don't know if it's a weird power draw. My computer's having all sorts of driver issues, so who knows. But when hooked up and working correctly on various test PCs, 40 milliseconds of latency. This makes it, this is the preview latency, since obviously there's no pass through anyway. This is the latency towards rendering your video feed you send it onto OBS pre, OBS's preview. This makes it the second fastest capture card I tested, second only to Avermedia's own Live Gamer 4K, which is 36 milliseconds. This is wild. This means it will be super in sync with your, you know, your video and audio can stay in sync. It will be super easy to sync up your audio if you have it running in through a separate source. It means theoretically, if you're playing non first person games or non timing focused games, you could theoretically get away with playing from the OBS preview. I don't recommend it. And I, I just want to keep clarifying this because it's not just the input latency itself, because some people look at 40 milliseconds and they're like, oh, lots of TVs are that way. It's variable latency. So with the TV, unless there's some funky processing going on or it's a really bad TV, your TV's input latency or your monitor's input latency is static. It's just a set input latency and you can easily, well, relatively easily, adapt to it and be good to go. With OBS, since it is rendering a scene, that latency you know, the frame time that it actually takes to render that frame varies all over the place based on what's on, you know, what you have going on in OBS, whether you're recording or not, what else is happening in the background. Right now, as I'm recording this, my latent, my render frame latency is bouncing anywhere from 13.3 to 15 milliseconds. So that kind of fluctuating latency is always talked about in the retro community when it comes to scalers. That is a problem that makes it hard to adapt to because you have your monitor latency, you have the capture card latency, those two are stacked, and then you have OBS's latency, which is fluctuating and that makes it very difficult to adapt to and gives me kind of motion sick kind of feelings for it. Some people can make it work. If you really want to play from the preview, I'd recommend loading up Amarec or Virtual Dub instead. The Live Streamer Cap 4K is a UVC capture card, which means it's plug and play and works great in Windows, Mac, and Linux as well. No issues on my M1 Mac Mini, no issues on Windows, and no issues on Linux in OBS either. So pretty rock solid there, and I'm glad to see so many capture cards these days releasing that even if they don't have official Linux support, like you're not running Cam Engine for any of these special effects on Linux, 
getting the capture card that works on Linux is a huge upgrade from where we were just like three years ago, and I'm so glad to see it. This also means it'll work in your video calling apps like Discord, Teams, Zoom, whatever. Quality wise, it looks great. Got pl had plenty of captures here, both from PC, console, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, playing at 1440p 144Hz, 1440p 60, 1080p 60. Had a good time with pretty much everything. Didn't really have any issues, and it honestly doesn't get that hot either, which is nice. The tone mapping looks fine. I don't see any huge issues there. I know a lot of people aren't a huge fan of the HDR to SDR tone mapping in general, but I think it looks pretty solid. In terms of playing retro games, this is where this card actually shines. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have a pass-through, so you will still need an HDMI splitter, and that could break some of your compatibility with some of these scalers. But running the RetroTINK 2X through it, 480p works fine. Running the RetroTINK 5X through it, you get 1080p. Over under fill works fine. 1200p works. It actually unlocks a 1920 by 1200 uh, mode in OBS that isn't displayed previously, so that's pretty neat. However, 1440p and 768p modes do not work, which is kind of disappointing. On the flip side, the open source scan converter, even running the Super Nintendo, will work all the way through to 5X, which is freaking awesome. Now, the kind of secret sauce added on to everything with this capture card is you can use it with Avermedia's Cam Engine software to add on-screen filters and face tracking and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, I, I've tried it out a few times with their webcams and things like that. It's always been kind of laggy, not super great, like, uh, I'm not a huge fan. But with this capture card specifically, running it through, running it at 4K30, which I realize it's a lot of data, I get it. But running it at 4K, trying to use even the face masks or the punch-in, punch-out EPTZ stuff, I don't consider it usable. And I'm on a Titan RTX and Threadripper system. Like, it's, the face mask cannot keep up with my face, and the in and out mostly keeps up but it does this weird like pulsing thing where it'll like zoom in for a second and then zoom in more and then zoom in more like some really bad autofocus almost and i just have to imagine that it's just having too hard of a time keeping up and my gpu usage spikes through the roof when i'm doing that while on the other hand nvidia broadcast doesn't really struggle with this at all now i can't show you an exact one for one comparison because nvidia broadcast just decided to stop running on my system cool uh, so at some point I'll have to upload a side by side, uh, but even just looking at my previous examples of broadcasts, you know, zooming in and out feature looks significantly better. For 99 bucks, you cannot go wrong with this as a cam link. However, if you are just after 1080p capture, uh, the EVGA XR1 Lite might be a better option if you don't need some of the extra flare and things like that. Then that was only about 60 bucks on sale. I have linked below. Um, but for 100 bucks, this is one of the most competitive cam link options on the market in terms of like an actual good one and not a knockoff one. And weirdly enough, it's still $20 cheaper than Avermedia's previous option, which is the Extreme Cap UVC, which only did 1080p60 and is still 120 bucks. Don't know what's up with that, but then Razer went and launched their Kio X, or not Kio, what was it? The, the Ripsaw X at 120 bucks as well. And uh, like uh, immediately with those products, like I, I, I don't want to diss on companies too much, but when you have products like that, that immediately, like they, they're clearly going to offer this. It, it's a cam link. You put, plug your camera into it, you stream it. It's uncompressed versus the cheap, cheapo cant links that are compressed. At that point, feature for feature, it's going to be the same product. Immediately by being like 20 to 30 bucks more expensive, it's kind of a no-go. There's literally no reason to pay more money for it, but we will be covering it if I get my hands on it regardless. Product links to this will be in the description below as always. Learning about your gear is great, but what if you want to keep learning? What if you want to take it further? I struggle with something that many other education creators struggle with when it comes to YouTube's algorithms and releasing longer, more informative videos or extraneous content. To get past those issues, I've partnered with my creator friends to build our own video site. The site is called Nebula, and we've partnered with CuriosityStream. Nebula features YouTube's top education creators such as MKBHD, Thomas Frank, Low Spec Gamer, love that dude. Curiosity Stream saw what we were doing for educational content and wanted to partner up. We've worked out a deal where if you sign up with the link below, you not only get access to Curiosity Stream and their library of thousands of educational and documentary content, but you also get access to our streaming site, Nebula, for free for the entire duration of your subscription to Curiosity Stream. That means you get all of the amazing content on Curiosity Stream, but you also get my videos that are higher quality, ad-free, and often extended from the YouTube version, as well as that from all of the top education creators that are on Nebula as well. For a limited time, Curiosity Stream is offering a 26% off promotion off of their annual plan, making it less than $15 per year for both Curiosity Stream and Nebula. While you're there, check out Beyond the Spotlight and a Curiosity Stream original series that provides a lot of insight into the rise to fame of many people, including YouTube's own Mr. Beast. Head to curiositystream.com epos for the best deal in streaming and get access to both sites for under $15 per year. 
It's bonkers, you don't want to miss it. If you're looking for something else to watch, check out this other video about a ridiculous streaming box, like a whole dedicated streaming box from Cooler Master that just sent me on this really weird journey. <laughs> um, trying to review it. Remember, be kind, rewind, and join us on Discord. I'll see you later.